Hey, welcome to Storebrand Comics. I'm Tio, and I'm here to tell you about another comic book series. Or, well, I don't know if it's a full series yet. Um, it's called From Under Mountains. Uh, with art and colors by Sloan Leong. Story and script by Claire Gibson. Covers and story by Marion Churchland. Letters by Ariana Marr and backup art by Brandon Graham. I don't know if I pronounced every name on there correctly, so. Um, this is a fantasy story, and um, on the back of the book, uh, the synopsis reads, In Akara, a nation bound by land and sea, an isolated northern fortress huddles at the foot of a towering mountain range. For generations, Carsgate Keep has served as the lone link to the Mosgol, a mysterious goblin race with the power to end wars or begin them. Lady Elena, daughter of Lord Crow, sees her chance to break the bounds of her station when a once lauded knight arrives on a political mission, but old ghosts and new enemies are working to tear apart the Crow family in unimaginable ways. As it is written in Hanhara's forbidden lore, this blood once spilled cannot be staunched and murder is never forgotten. So, this book, um, I, I have a few, there are a few caveats um, that go along with reading this one. So far, it consists of only a single volume. Um, but uh, I've been doing some research on it because I actually didn't know anything about this book before I dove into it. So I had to do some research on it. And um, this volume has the first six issues of the series inside of it um and when it was announced it was meant to be a 12 issue series so that would have been two volumes but as far as i'm aware those six issues are all that have come out it really does feel like it's meant to be part of a longer bigger story because um this book is pretty much all set up with almost no payoff uh and another thing I didn't know until I did some research is apparently From Under Mountains, this book, is supposed to be a part of a larger shared fantasy universe called Eight House. Um, so I haven't read any of the other titles in this Eight House universe. Um, and uh, so far, I, I so I don't know how this book connects to those other ones in this same world um but yeah uh, just going into it it's it has a very good like setup um it is a very interesting read uh the way that the magic is portrayed in this world is it seems very you know dark and eerie and weird um it's familiar enough that you understand that it is, you know, supposed to be magic, but also alien enough and different enough that, like, it's unique from other, um, magics that you usually see in fantasy comics or novels or what have you. So, yeah, um, one thing I will say about this is it is difficult to, um, really, like, give any in-depth analysis on it because it is technically only half a story um and as far as i'm aware the second half just doesn't exist um and i don't know if it's that the second half doesn't exist yet or if the series was for some reason canceled i tried doing research uh before recording this video on whether or not the series had been canceled and it was impossible to find any concrete um information on that so as far as I know, it's just on a hiatus, I guess. So that's definitely something to know before you jump into this book, is that this is the first volume of a one-volume series, if that makes any sense. So next I want to talk about the art. Um, it has a very, uh, like painted vibe to it not so painted that it feels abstract and loose but painted enough 
that it feels like you're looking at um, an artistic representation, of, I guess, of like an older legend, um, except probably more coherent. Um, it's definitely uh, nowhere near as like abstract or weird to look at as like, say, the painting of like Greek legends on like the sides of vases and stuff. Uh, this you can tell that this is illustrated you know as a comic book um, but it still has that like there are elements to it that have that sort of a sort of a looser flowy visual style to them there's um, like a mist creature in like a like a living vapor sort of thing that exists in this book and anytime it is depicted um, like the tendrils of mist that sort of come off of it tend to reach over the borders between panels, which I think is very interesting. Um, yeah, it's a good looking book altogether. Um, it is, I would say the artwork is above average. Um, another uh, interesting thing of note is that the uh, main cast of the series is are, are predominantly people of color. Uh, which I think is very interesting. You don't see that a lot in um, comic books that aren't specifically targeted at um, that sort of demographic. But yeah, like, uh, in fact, I can't think of a single character that I saw in this book that I would describe as white. So um, it's, I think that's pretty, pretty neat. Um, it has a very, like, a uh, deserty sort of vibe to it like I can't remember seeing anything green uh, in the entire book other than clothing um, and even those I think tended to be a bit of a duller green but yeah like there there wasn't a whole lot of plant life in this book so it gives off a very sort of deserty mountainy sort of vibe you know hence the title from under mountains but uh, yeah it's um so visually it is a very interesting uh, book to look at um, and it is distinct from other fantasy books. And now for the book's um, content, I guess. Um, I guess this is where I give my uh, personal rating on it. Um, the book on the back, if I'm not mistaken, is it is rated as a teen book. Um, uh, comic books, I've noticed, tend to follow a similar, especially when image does them not every comic as far as i'm aware has an age rating on the back um i just know that most of them do an image usually puts a rating on the back um and they tend to follow a very similar system to uh uh the way the esrb uh rates video games so like uh t for teen is usually how comic books are rated or m for mature that sort of thing um so yeah, uh, I definitely recommend following the rating on this one as well. Um, if this were like a film, I would give it like a PG-13 sort of rating. Um, there is one instance of uh, the use of strong language in this book, uh, one very brief instance. So that kind of, is, uh, the fact that it's only once keeps it from being tipped over into like a more mature sort of rating. Um, but yeah, and then as far as um, violence goes, there are a few violent moments in this book, but they're not gratuitous or gory. Um, nothing personally scarring uh, as far as I can see. And then uh, as far as like any nudity or um, sexuality or adult content in that uh, regard, um, there isn't any. Uh, so yeah. Uh, it's 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 definitely like a, a teen rated book. This is I, I would say um, this is just uh, me personally, but I would say thirteen and older maybe uh, would be a good age for reading this book. And now um, this is the part of the video where I kind of talk about. Uh, just some personal issues that I may have with the book. And um, I don't think any of these are really the book or even the creators of the book's fault. It's just that um, the unfinished nature of it does make it a little harder to recommend. Um, 
it puts a great deal of effort into building up a fleshed out world. Uh, there are even some pieces of lore at the back of the book um, about like, uh, you know, historical events and um, the deities that these people worship um, and that sort of thing. Like the sort of myths and stories that they tell about their heroes and their deities and that sort of thing. Uh, which is all interesting. Um, but due to the fact that this uh, this is only half a story, this is an unfinished project, um, and I, I didn't feel lost in any way as far as um, like its place in its own universe, um, which I think is a good thing. So as far as I can tell, there's not really a whole lot of connection to this larger eight house universe that it's supposed to take place in um but yeah the the fact that it is only half a story means that all of that lore and history doesn't really get the opportunity to go towards anything um this book ends essentially with the actual beginning of the story um the entire book is basically building up to the starting line uh, which I think can be a bit of a uh, uh, bit of a downer as far as its story goes. So yeah, um, it's a bit of a weird one to talk about for uh, one of these videos since it is technically unfinished. But um, I still think it's worth recommending because it is uh, an interesting um, comic. It's published by Image Comics, um, if I didn't say that earlier. So yeah. From Under Mountains, with art and colors by Sloan Leong. Le 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 Leong. Sloan Leong. Story and script by Claire Gibson. Covers and art by Marion Churchland. Letters by Ariana Marr. Backup art by Brandon Graham. So yeah. I do recommend it because it looks pretty it has an interesting world and um if you're interested it ties into a larger universe um i don't know that i'm really going to go into that larger universe uh in the future um so i guess just stick around we'll we'll see uh for now i guess it didn't quite uh grab me quite enough to get me invested in a larger world so uh subscribe to the channel if uh you liked this video and want to learn more about comic books in the future um leave a comment telling me uh if there's anything i could improve about the way i make these videos um and i will try to accommodate as much as possible um and that is if you th if you have any opinions and think there is a, a way that i could improve these i want to be able to get better so and um i guess like the video if you liked it R ring the notification bell if you want to be notified when i um am uploading more videos so yeah all that good youtube stuff